Hiya, Barbie. Hi, Ken. You want to go do a podcast? Sure. Jump in. Ladies and gentlemen, Barbies and Kents, Chelsea's of all ages, and everyone else, welcome to Binging Barbie, a Barbie movie podcast. I'm your host, Jay, and with me, I have my wonderful co-host. For security reasons, I cannot inform you of His Highness's whereabouts. I trust you will respect his privacy. John. Yes, I need it. (laughs) Don't look at me. Don't even touch me, okay? (laughs) I don't even know your whereabouts beyond, like, Oh, maybe I do. Maybe you sent me your address at one point. Maybe I did. Maybe oh, I did. I've said I've sent Barbie movies to you in the mail. So yeah, I do. You I did. Do know. You did. Anyway, Dog, sir. <laughs> for those of you just joining us, we are a podcast about Barbie movies. Every week, we watch one of the animated Barbie movies and we rate its story, characters, animation, voice acting, and music to see how it stacks up. This week, we will be talking about the 37th animated Barbie movie, Ugh. Barbie Princess Adventure. 37. Yeah, that number goes up and up every week. You know, I don't know insane. what that means anymore. <laughs> it means we have watched more Barbie movies than there are James That's... Bond movies. I think this is now more than there are like Marvel projects including television shows we're almost there we're almost uh suppressing godzilla movies it <laughs> seems as well <laughs> yeah we're 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 deep into barbie territory here we we're are... so deep into barbie territory we're <laughs> almost done i have senioritis now for barbie you <laughs> just we just want to get to the end and watch the margo do her stuff yes that that is the end goal we are, we are um recording <laughs> or releasing you won't notice any gaps but we are sort of on and off recording here taking breaks to for life stuff and to make it through to the end without going completely insane because we would go insane Probably, i would go insane yeah. i'd go so <laughs> mad we've we've been watching barbie separately from the podcast we are going we have insane. we have yes like <laughs> On a whim, I watched Barbie Life in the Dream House as a joke. Now I unironically love that show. Oh, it's great. It it's is. so great. <laughs> I'm glad you told me to watch it. I know. Remember how apprehensive you were about it? And then I you was. watched it, and then you were so mad at me how I got you addicted? Anyway, <laughs> we're watching Princess Adventure. Yeah, my, my joke with this title, as I shared last episode, is that Half of all of the Barbie movies could be called Barbie Princess Adventure. And having watched the movie, I think it is very similar to those half of the Barbie movies. Mm -hmm. But not all Princess Adventures can be called Barbie movies. No, no. Um, This one was released September 1st, 2020. And it was the first Barbie movie since 2017 with Dolphin Magic. So... In the time between, they um, made a TV show, which has three seasons between 2017 and ending in 2020, mm. called Barbie Dreamhouse Adventures. Now, this is separate from Barbie Life in the Dreamhouse. Um, Life in the Dreamhouse is sort of like a short online comedy thing that was put on YouTube. Um, Dreamhouse Adventures is like a full-on tv show with 22 minute episodes and mm-hmm. um you're on netflix yep and i've not seen them <laughs> yeah i i after watching princess adventure i went back because princess adventure is actually directly following up the dream house adventures series i wish um, i knew this i could have been doing my homework and watching <laughs> the show it, it's not a great show the the format of the show is slice it of takes life pl- it takes place in the same sort of like after dolphin magic because you have the puppies and you have stacy and chelsea and all of those people and you also have um teresa and other characters and ken obviously um and it's sort of like a family comedy because they finally introduced barbie's parents oh yeah and um the the framing narrative of it is Barbie is a vlogger. 
Mm-hmm. And so every episode starts with like Barbie in some insane situation. And then she literally pauses it and says, do you want to know how I got into the situation? Or like, you're probably wondering how I got into the situation. Well, let's rewind back to the beginning of the story. Mm. Every episode starts that way. So it's an early 2000s show made in 2017. (laughs) Got it. And then, yeah, it's because, you know, life in the dream house obviously had these confessional moments of like, it cuts to the characters who are like having an interview on a couch, which is like a common reality TV thing that then got put into sitcoms and other things. Um, This one, instead, it is Barbie will literally pause the action, often right before a punchline, just like pause it and then explain what is going on. Oh, yeah. So like there was one where um, the most recent one I saw, Barbie was doing this like extreme cooking competition and she was practicing for it and a spider got on her tightrope that she was balancing stuff on and she falls off the tightrope. And before you see her land, she pauses and says, this is why I'm afraid of spiders. It goes through her whole history. What kind of competition was this? (laughs) Extreme baking. Okay. American Ninja Warrior combined with a cooking show. Uh, That sounds awesome, but okay. It it does. But again, the the way the show is structured as this sort of like vlog, Mm. just like they just cut before the punchline so it isn't funny anymore and then it's just like barbie says oh and then i fell it's like you're missing the i see i guess we couldn't show that (laughs) yep i was just watching buster keaton's spite marriage and that's like great physical comedy as buster keaton always has it it's like no you gotta have the punchline you can't pause and explain the joke but obviously this is a show this is made for kids they like need everything explained to them apparently yeah it's made for kids even younger than like the dream house adventures show or <laughs> life in the dream house was. yeah you see this is the problem when your two shows have the same title that's why they do it <laughs> but yeah a- anyway so princess adventures um they have they're reusing characters reusing models reusing voice actors reusing mm-hmm. even like some sets i think um, so so it is like following up this TV show and sort of the as we've been seeing more and more recently they've been consolidating all of this Barbie stuff into like one continuity where before yeah. you had the idea of like oh Barbie's an actress and she's playing these different roles in different places but like the stories don't directly tie up now it's like everything is following the last one I guess, you know, they have been wanting to do a continuity for a bit. Yeah. But now they're doing it. Yeah. Which, I don't know, as someone who isn't the biggest fan of this iteration of some of the sisters and some of the side characters and the puppies, Mm. especially, it's like, it's a little bit disappointing that we aren't getting, like, the Rapunzel or Princess and the Popper anymore. It's just like, Here's a self-contained adventure. There's like a meta narrative on top of it, but the meta narrative doesn't actually influence the story. Mm. But yeah. And anyway, this was directed by Conrad Helton, who he's been with the Barbie series for a very long time at this point, and actually worked a lot on Dreamhouse Adventures. Same with um Anne Austin, who's who wrote this um movie and. She is a TV producer and writer who worked on most of Barbie Dreamhouse Adventures um, and also several Power Rangers shows. Mm. She was a producer on Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and then a writer on several others. And then we have production design by Maisha Moore. Um, She's Canadian Scottish artist and started out as a character modeler on Barbie and the Three Musketeers. So sort of worked her way up the ladder here. And then she was also a lead designer on the Adams Family movie, which um, other Barbie production designers have worked on. This would be the animated one, the most recent yeah, one. Yeah, the, the 2019 one, not the sequel. 
That too, but okay. <laughs> yep, and we have music from the Math Club, who, again, they're a company that creates music for movies and trailers and shows. So, and yeah, the the story is Barbie has a princess adventure. Yeah. <laughs> As she's had many times before. Um, she and her friends, all of her friends from Life of the Dream House. I'm not sure. Because the, the show is three seasons and I've only seen a few episodes from the first season. So I think some of the friends get introduced later. Probably. Um, given how little time any of them is spent on in the movie. But... Barbie and her friends get invited to the royal palace of the kingdom of Floravia. And Floravia. <laughs> it's, it's an odd name. Mm -hmm. But Barbie is working on her vlog um, since she's a vlogger in Life in the Dream House. And apparently not a successful one. You mean Dream House Adventures? Dream House Adventures. <laughs> This is what happens when they name their two shows the exact same thing. Yeah. It's, I cannot keep track of which one is which. But anyway, um, she gets this offer to join a big channel. I'm assuming they're kind of going for like a multi-channel network type thing. Ah. Um, to, to increase her reach. So machinima. Yeah. Um, but, but because she's joined this channel, she's feeling very creatively constrained and like, you have to get a video out now. Well, I want to go on this vacation with my friends. No, you have to get your vlog out. But anyway, they go to the palace and obviously Barbie accidentally runs into the princess, Princess Amelia. Accidentally. And, well... She runs into her accidentally, but the reason she's there is not an accident. Mm -hmm. Because it turns out that Barbie and Amelia look very similar to each other. Oh. And they hit it off and sort of like, they get to know each other. They realize, oh, we're both feeling kind of constrained in our lives. We want different things from our lives. Um, and then Amelia reveals that... She actually has been watching Barbie's vlogs and was like, hey, we look kind of similar. And so she flew Barbie and her friends over to switch places for a little bit. Yeah. And from then on, we're doing Princess of the Pop Star again. Yeah. With a few differences. We have, the, this time around, we have um, the... There's a bunch of, like, politics going on in the background because Floravia is, com like, or there's a different kingdom called Johannistan that is has surrendered to Floravia and is in the process of, like, becoming integrated with them. What a and weird concept. They have to, like, do this dance at the coronation for Princess Amelia in order for the treaty to go through. So do they go to the war at the end? Like, what happens? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I don't even know. Were they at war before the events of the movie? They must have. Yeah. But they just arrested their prince. <laughs> I, I'm not privy to the, the political machinations of these. I think it's just since the since they were already combining, I think since the coronation went through, she just became the ruler of both. I guess. But yeah, anyway, um, in, in sort of going back to, they've switched places and Amelia's advisor very quickly figures out that Barbie is pretending to be the princess. Um, but he agrees to go along with things until the princess returns and Barbie meets Johan, who's the prince of Johannistan, believe it or not. And Whoa. they, they start practicing this coronation ceremony in this dance which will unite their nations johannes brahms <laughs> <Guten Tag. laughs> yeah the they um barbie is also at this time she's planning to film this vlog with amelia afterwards to talk about their experiences 
Um, and so she sends it off to the channel to be like, hey, this is what I want to post. And they send it back. It's edited to make the princess look very conceited. So Barbie's like, no, thanks. And pulls out of the agreement with the channel. That's essentially the end of that plot line. So we yeah. don't have to deal with that anymore. The, There's no... The, it, the video itself wasn't even that great. It's like... No. This is social media in 2020? That looks like a 2006 <laughs> video. <laughs> yeah. I was surprised that the they didn't go ahead and post it anyway. There was probably... I was thinking that was going to be the conflict at the end. Right, but then I was thinking, it's like, ah, uh, there was probably contracts and stuff involved that they're hiding behind, but still, yeah, yeah they would. I, I have, I have a thought about where this story could have gone that I think would have been more interesting than the direction they took it. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, we get to the day of the coronation, and Amelia, who's still on the streets as Barbie, um, living out her Monica Vitti fantasy with her vespa and helmet and whatever she's doing (laughs) whatever or as they would say in white lotus her peppa pig fantasy Uh, um but she she gets she gets kidnapped while walking down the streets and her pet rabbit that she has finds barbie um and is able to communicate to barbie what happened And Barbie makes a plan to rescue Amelia, but gets kidnapped before she can. How, how did she, what, how did she communicate that she was kidnapped? I don't remember. It involved, like... Was it guards that they overheard? Yeah, I think so. Must have been. Yeah. And then, like, Barbie gets kidnapped, but then she escapes, but then she goes on the yacht and gets kidnapped again anyway she also <laughs> sends the horse to go find yes. her friends and then we don't see the horse finding her friends <laughs> they know. just show up and she's rescue like you barbie and amelia from the yacht no it was really confusing she's like oh go go tell my friends where we are and i'm like barbie that's a horse <laughs> <laughs> and then i was like oh yeah you can lead it but then we never saw the horse again nope she, she used her necklace, though, the Barbie necklace that says her name that she forgot to take off when she was pretending to be Princess Amelia. Yeah. A- anyway, the big twist, quote unquote, is that Johan was secretly planning to steal the crown of the two nations um, and become the sole ruler of the kingdom. Because for some reason in the treaty that they made, they said if the princess doesn't show up, then the prince of the country that is surrendering to the other will become the leader of the two countries i mean that seems like a logical step (laughs) yeah if one of your people doesn't show up then it's like well what do we do now (laughs) anarchy i don't know (laughs) elected government (laughs) Eh, too much effort (laughs) but yeah barbie and amelia are able to um they're they're barbie's friends show up and rescue them and they get her out and they get to the coronation just in time to stop everything and then the video of the coronation goes viral very nice yeah again it's was that a video or a live stream i don't know it was never they were getting one billion views on it i get okay which okay so side note here there's an opening music video thing that barbie films in her backyard and with her friend daisy and her sisters and part of the video is them putting on different outfits and daisy puts on a graduation outfit so my sister who i was watching this with sarah who's been on this podcast before was like oh what's the year on that so we went back and we paused it the graduation year on this graduation outfit mm-hmm. is twenty three fifty three. So but this like, movie is taking place three hundred years in the future, right? But wasn't it a cardboard <laughs> cutout in an actual gown that they had? Yes, maybe but... it's a joke. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what is up with that, but it it, it explains certain things like. How they somehow got a okay, million so, simultaneous views on this. Okay, so society has devolved, dissolved enough where 
we've come full circle and like stuff from 2006 is now the mainstream again yep okay and but there are, the population is enough that you can conceivably get one billion views on in the a live minute stream. yeah in a minute <laughs> And also, if you look at the world map on um the multi-channel network ladies' wall, uh-huh. it is inverted, and Australia has handlebars. Okay. <laughs> so, apparently that also happened in the 300 years. I mean, it you, you don't, you can't really tell <laughs> that <laughs> the world is overpopulated. I mean, just that coronation alone, just... Looked like a small church meeting, yeah. Than an actual coronation. Everybody's dressed in casual clothing. Like the pews were like every other seat was empty. <laughs> yeah, they were. There were pews as well. Yeah, so... no, it was. It was. I, I'm assuming they're pulling character models from. The, oh, they were. Like they were. No, not Life at the Dreamhouse. Dreamhouse Adventures. Yeah. They're using their yeah. models, but like still, <laughs> I was like, is this a coronation? It just, all these random people, they're dressed casually, there's pews. Is this a church? What are we doing? <laughs> Where are the guards? I don't, I don't <laughs> They show up when they need to. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, th- this is just Princess and the Popper all over again. It is just Princess and the Popper. That's why they had no title, because they were like, oh, this is the third time we're doing Princess and the Popper. What do we call this film? Uh, Princess Adventure. Love it. Stick with that. (laughs) Yeah. There are a few differences, but it's just like, because even Princess Charm School and Rock and Royals had similar elements. I don't know. This just, I mean, for having the most generic title of any of these barbie movies it is it does feel like the most generic we've seen thus far i do like that that the meeting was purposeful yeah than more accidental but yeah it is just another princess in the popper it tells the story just fine yeah i there there are so many interesting directions i could have taken it and one of the ideas I had is because princess and the pop star follows the, um, the princess who does it follow. Yeah. It kind of, it kind of splits the difference a bit better than this one does. Cause in this one, Amelia disappears for like most of the movie. Yeah. The second half of the film. And it would have been interesting to see her. Like, what does she get up to? Well, she has a song. She does. But no, it's shared with Barbie. Yeah. But it's like, like, whenever she's calling Barbie. What if she got up to like shenanigans? What if she herself uncovered this plot? Apparently she was hitchhiking with someone. Well, she had her Vespa. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I, I, Yeah. I don't know. There there could have been something there. Mm-hmm. And I think the most what they really could have leaned into is um cuz I I do find it interesting how central of a role social media plays to the plot of this movie. Um and, and it's interesting recently I watched um overly sarcastic productions released a video on the trope of those darn phones sort of like phones and how they exist in media and like, you know, what they look like in sci-fi and how that's changed over time as people sort of become accustomed to ideas. And we've seen this a bit in these Barbie movies of how in, you know, fashion fairy tale, it's like Barbie gets canceled on social media, but it's like, not that big of a focus whereas now it's like social media is sort of this thing that the characters are constantly thinking about um and it has this message quote-unquote message of don't live your whole life online and social media isn't 
real life. But it also in the plot never reflects this. Cause there's like that whole song about don't use your phone too much, but then the whole plot of the movie is Barbie and her vlog. She's like constantly filming everything. Well, I guess I didn't notice any of that. <laughs> yeah, it's, and I mean, I think that's partially it of like, we become accustomed enough to it that it doesn't stand out as much. But the entire plot of this thing is like, oh, Barbie and Princess Amelia are both feeling discontent with their social media presence specifically um where barbie is like i don't have a wide enough audience for what i want to do and amelia is like i feel like i can't say anything because i have to be picture perfect all the time Mm -hmm. and i i think they could have done something interesting with this if they had committed to it and been like okay let's Let's do this message of social media is not real life. Put down your phone. But no, that's like, that. that's never, even though they have a whole song about it, that never actually factors in. It's just like, here's the song about putting your phone down. Okay, now Barbie's going to go vlog the coronation and get a billion views. Mm-hmm. Like, you could have had an interesting arc of, and this is where we go back to what if um, the, I think her name is Rose Ross. What if she had posted that butchered video of the princess and Barbie? And the reaction to it is like, oh, the princess is so conceited. I knew she was terrible. And then because of that, the princess and Barbie have to learn to like, step away from that and not get so caught up in it. That was probably an earlier draft of the film, but then we're like, ah, this is a story that's used so often. So they just continued using a story that's been used so often. (laughs) Yeah. They could have done, I don't know. It would have given the characters more depth though, to, to have that emotional arc for them of learning to, And it's an important message, even if it is kind of often done in a way that isn't handled well. Like, I think often it can be a little preachy. But if this movie had been able to do that, well, that would have been cool. Instead, they have a throwaway song about it that doesn't actually impact anything. It's just the same we've seen before. Mm -hmm. We've even seen the whole, like, messing up the don't use your phones message before (laughs) but this time with barbie instead of skipper yeah skipper is completely normal (laughs) well she she just doesn't factor in at all to this yeah well again maybe maybe they're better in the show i don't know the there was a those darn phones episode in the show that was a little bit it was like oh everyone has to learn to live without like barbie's dad wants to make everyone live without their phones for a weekend and yeah (laughs) don't watch the show riveting storytelling it is not it is not all that interesting but we might have to instead we might have to yeah. for an episode two years down the line. <laughs> well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Yeah, when we feel like it. But yeah, for, for now, I gave the story a 2.5 out of 5. It, I mean, the like pacing of it isn't bad. No. It's just not anything new in any interesting way. Yeah, I gave it a 3. To be a little bit more fair, even though yeah, it's a, it's another princess in the pauper story, so that's why it's lower. But like, it's not terrible. 
it does an okay job of telling that story again. Yeah. It's it's fine. <laughs> uh, on to the characters. Um, I, I do appreciate the diversity of Barbie's friend group. So um, diverse. Yeah, we, we have, even just in, like, body type, mm-hmm. which is something that these Barbie movies haven't done a ton of. And it's not, like, a focus. Like, they aren't constantly calling it out. No. Um, unfortunately, um, most of the characters in this movie don't get much to do because there are too many of them. Yeah. Like, there's... Barbie has so many friends, and they're all along for the ride. And... Yeah, they're kind of caricatures. Yeah. And that that's part of why I watched a few episodes of the show. Unfortunately, the episodes I watched, most of Barbie's friends didn't show up in. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I was just curious if... If with that extra time, these characters get a bit more nuance... Because I, I can imagine, like, um, well, one of my favorite movies from a few years ago is the Downton Abbey movie. Oh, okay. And that is one of those things where it works if you haven't seen the show. But if you have seen the show, all of the characters are so much deeper and more interesting because you have that knowledge going in of who they are leading up to that point. Mm-hmm. Or you could even, for a, for a more populist example like the later avengers movies where if you just jump into avengers infinity war you're like oh drax is the strong but dumb guy but then if you watch the guardians movies leading up to that you see more of who his character is and what his arc is Mm -hmm. so the way it the way he factors into the movie is a little bit more interesting so I'm wondering if that's the case here, but I would have to watch more of Dreamhouse Adventures to be able to judge that. And at this point, I don't plan on watching much more of Dreamhouse Adventures. Until I force you. <laughs> yep. I, I did see I did see um episodes with Nikki and Teresa and Ken, of course, is in a lot of them, and mm-hmm. Trey Reardon, who he gets more of a focus in this movie than a lot of the friends. A little Which, too much focus. Yeah, so, since we're talking about them, let's just dive into them. Um, yeah. Like, I don't think Teresa or Nikki have lines of consequence. Like, I think you could cut them out of the movie and not notice because they're only ever in the background. Yeah, half a lot of people are in the background. Yeah, everyone's no. in the background. <laughs> Everyone is, and then you get you get like Trey's song of like yeah, how he wants to be king, and it doesn't make any sense because why is he getting the song when you have a villain who wants to be king and who actually sings part of the song? Yeah. <laughs> Like have have the villain sing the song and have Trey do the reprise. Also, like also like that reprise was like at, right after. Yes, no, it Trey's was literally song. literally like two seconds later. He sings that after that <laughs> very shocking reveal that he's the villain. Yeah, just just like flip them around so Trey gets the twenty second reprise and Johad gets the actual song, or just cut Trey. Yeah. That that too, because you don't need him here. He doesn't his one, add his any. His only conflict. good joke, I I say good joke. His only good joke is not recognizing Barbie. Yes, that that is a good, good mm-hmm. bit. But I I did like um, there is the thing with Ken of he's trying to tell Barbie something, and so it's it's the Finn thing from Rise of Skywalker that would have happened months before this. Yes, or I, I was thinking it's almost the Isabella thing from Phineas and Ferb. Is it? Because that, that is, Isabella's constantly trying to tell Phineas that she likes him, and but something like, always happens. But like, it, yeah, I say it's Finn as well, because yeah. we don't actually get to hear what it is they're trying to say. 
Yeah, that, it's that a waste of time. And, and I wonder if it's a thing in the show. Oh, because if it's a, if it's more of a thing in the show, I think it makes sense. But it was not a thing in the episodes I saw. Yeah, and so when it happened here, it's like, okay, are we doing something interesting? Nope. <laughs> yeah. The, I guess the... we wanted to give Ken a little something. Yeah, which, if you cut out most of the friends and just had Ken and a few other people, like, you could give him more to do. The The only friend that I thought had a fun bit was Renee. The animals do more than the friends do. <laughs> yeah. Renee Renee is fun though. She she's pretending to be a secret agent for some reason, which I think that was the name of one of the spy squad characters. So but she she has some fun moments with that. They could have done more with her character if they had had more time, which is again, they need to cut most of the friends out for this to work too many cooks too many cooks takes a lot to make us do uh anyway <laughs> moving on <laughs> moving on um yeah barbie here i i think it's interesting how her persona has changed over the years and i think I forget which episode we figured this out in, but she's sort of the older sister type. Mm. And this is especially in Dreamhouse Adventures, where it's like most of the plots have to do with her sisters. And she is like the attentive older sister who's constantly trying to solve their problems. Mm -hmm. So she's like this fantastical idea of an older sister who's always looking out for you and always wants to spend time with you. Um, but they've sort of changed her persona now. She's no longer like the superstar actor model who knows everything. She's now a vlogger. And so there's a bigger emphasis on sort of the social media aspect of everything. Yeah. But yeah, she, she does not get an arc at all here and i wish she had gotten an arc of some sort i mean she's just here to change people's lives essentially and that, that's yeah. where the older sister thing comes in where she's like the fantasy of the perfect older sister mm -hmm. and yeah amelia she disappears for most of the movie to live her peppa pig fantasy <laughs> yeah and that, that is all she does there's a thing about how she's like oh i i want to like tell the world who i actually am and discover who i am for myself and she does that entirely off screen yeah and then wears a dress that says love 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 to her yeah. coronation then Alfonso gets changed in just a conversation. A fierce conversation with Barbie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's... I liked him. <laughs> yeah. He he was interesting, but... I liked his voice actor, but... Yeah, well... That's we'll, for we'll a completely different yeah. reason than just this performance. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I think the movie could have distinguished itself a bit if, rather than focusing on Barbie, it had focused more on Amelia. Yeah. What does she get up to outside of the palace? And then she could even discover this plot. Mm hmm And then maybe, maybe Barbie even puts her in charge of running the vlog. And how does she do that? But yeah, it's probably more of like, well, this is a film for the show. We don't want to show most of the film being about this other character. Yeah. So. And it's also, it's a Barbie movie, so Barbie yeah. is the focus. Of course. Until, unless it's something else, like Fairytopia. <laughs> yeah. Or Thumbelina. That too. 
but yeah, um, we we do have you mentioned Alfonso. He, he's interesting. He's a bit of an enigma. Yeah, I don't that like he's... how he disappears at the end. Yeah, and, just and like both... in that other film. What was it? Princess in the Pop Store. Yeah. Yeah. And he is like he's both the sort of strict advisor and also the like parental figure. Mm-hmm. He's like the Alfred to Amelia's Batman, but also a stricter Alfred. <laughs> yeah, it's like must win. You're not going to be Batman. You gotta <laughs> protect your image. <laughs> I've buried enough members of the Wayne family. I want to fight crime. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> and anyway, the, this is... He, he's, he could have been more interesting, but there's not enough time. Yeah, they had to focus have, on the horse. Yeah. <laughs> and forget about the horse at the same time. <laughs> yeah, the, then we have on the villain side, we have Prince Johan. Who... He was a villain? Yeah, his motivations are very thin, again, because they don't have time to establish any interesting motivations. I feel like they started out with him being a nicer character. Yeah. And then they were like, ah, I don't think Rose Ross is an interesting villain. What do we do? (laughs) Well, we can go with the Preminger route. Okay, let's do that. Johan, you're a villain now. But it, it feels like they did that. Not in the scripting process, but like halfway through the movie. Yeah. Because <laughs> he is in the first scene. You're like, okay, the vibe is a bit weird, but in like a. It's almost really like friendly he's supposed European to, yeah. guy way. Also, the potential love interest. Yeah. But then I'm like, nah. Yeah. It's again. There, there are interesting ways they could have done this, but they don't have the time because there's so many characters. No, he only turned into a villain during the rock paper scissor game. Yeah, that's when he showed his true colors. <laughs> I lost. <laughs> Stares you out the window. Win. <laughs> For now. <laughs> Yeah, sings he, a song about being king. Two, 20 seconds of someone else's song about being king. <laughs> it's not even his own song. Yeah, he just yeah, looks I do, like. I do a wonder if they player. if they switch gears partway through production. It's possible, because that would explain some of the weirdness here. Yeah, and it's not uncommon for animated movies to start production without finishing the story completely or maybe they just planned this from the beginning but it wasn't a good plan (laughs) yeah speaking of people who could have been planned out better rose ross rose ross the social media manager who Mm -hmm. Again, like I said, why didn't she release the video? That would have been much more interesting for the story and for her character. Yeah, I mean, the the boss from Megan was much more interesting than we had here. Yeah. Yeah, because you get that same, like, corporate greed thing, but you're actually exploring it rather than... Barbie says she doesn't want the vlog uploaded, so she doesn't upload the vlog. Even though no social media manager who is that ruthless would respect Barbie's wishes. They would just post it out of spite and deal with the consequences later. Yeah, because it's a huge story that would drive a ton of interest. Like, oh, the princess of this major country who's about to be crowned queen is swapping places with a random vlogger from Malibu. Yeah, even Raquel would have done it. Yeah. <laughs> Get Raquel in here. Yeah. Although I think I think there's a different Raquel. Oh. I think I think her name is Tammy. Well that well, Jay, that's Tammy, not Raquel. Yes. But I think I think she's filling that role 
in the show. Mm. I'm not sure though, because I haven't seen that many episodes. But I think that's who, because all of Barbie's friends get invited except for one. And I think that's the Raquel character, but I don't think she's actually named Raquel. But anyway, I gave the characters a three out of five. They aren't terrible, but uh, maybe I need to. I'm I'm not going to bring my score down, but I am yeah. considering it. It's a three because there's so many characters and nothing with them. What's fine is Barbie and Amelia. That's about it. Here, here's why I'm giving it a three. I appreciate them committing more to having more diverse characters. But they don't do anything with them. Even though they don't do anything with them, which is frustrating. Yeah. But yeah, on to the animation. The quality is good. Um, I think it's closer to the quality of Dreamhouse Adventures. So... The thing about the animation is the opening, uh-huh. the opening sequence with uh, Amelia riding the horse, you know, yeah, the, the very beginning of the film. Uh, the horse tramples on water and it's like, oh, look at that water effect. That's yeah. my first note. Like, wow, that water looks good. And then we get our first close up and it's like, oh, my gosh, that looked so terrible. Like that <laughs> teeth. Wow. Yeah, they still have yeah. the same teeth. And then the rest of the film looked completely fine. It was just that one shot in the very beginning. It's like, <laughs> this looks so bad. When am I watching this? No, no. It was just a weird angle that they gave her. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, animation. I think they finally <laughs> solved their lighting issue. Oh, of, okay. Yeah, because I noticed that there was a much more lighting on just basic level scenes. Yeah, it's like yeah. There's more lighting. It's 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 fine. <laughs> like we're we're getting nothing special, but hey, they're actually doing something with just a special underwater scene. Cool. Yeah, I I did think it. it you can tell the three years change has sort of improved the quality. Yeah, but. I don't know. It still feels having watched a few episodes of Dreamhouse Adventures, the jump between the show and the movie is less than I would have expected. Yeah. Oh, well, touching on about the villain segment again. Yeah. I, I put a note here as we were halfway through the film. It's like, huh, we're halfway through. There's no villain. And then Johan is revealed to be the villain. It's like, oh, there he is. <laughs> Yeah, the the structure is odd. Also, oh, yeah. kidnapping in broad daylight in the middle of the street. <laughs> well, it was in a shadowy side street. In broad daylight in the middle of the street, full of social media. <laughs> yeah, like if you if you shoved her into a car, I would believe it. But you just put a sack over her. Yeah. Like. Like, uh, like the friends were just around the corner. Too. Yeah, <laughs> it it was odd. Yeah, but yeah, the the animation again, the quality is good. Um, I did notice the seams a bit more. The seams in as in what? As in, like characters didn't always feel like they were in the sets that they were supposed to be in right like it sometimes felt like their feet were floating above the ground um and i'm sure that's been a problem in other movies i just haven't noticed it as much yeah uh another thing that i noticed is that besides barbie like outside of barbie and a couple characters everyone just looks like sim characters (laughs) <laughs> like the, they're just generic sim characters like yeah. especially the teacher the yes. teacher the old man with the goats um the two uh the dudes the dudes even even trey uh yeah the ken 
like they all look like sim characters i'm like <laughs> oh okay interesting yeah the the design change for ken is still bad yeah i looked at him and i'm like that doesn't look like a ken he no, looks that lo- he That's looks more like a tray than a can. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's too he's too generic. Yeah. And, and that's a lot of my issues with this is that the creativity of the animation is so so. Like there's a few sequences that are cool. There's like the music scene that's going from black and white to color. That that looked kind of cool with like splashes of paint. And then there's like that boat chase scene. That was kind of fun. So Taffy is not going to make it back to the States. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> yeah. When, when Taffy snuck aboard the first time, I'm like, oh, well, he's not going to go back. <laughs> he can't. Well, she can't because... Uh, uh, you know, airplane laws, you got to check them in, you got to pay like a hundred bucks. <laughs> it's like several months a process to do this. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't even thinking about that. <laughs> but yeah, the, I think the biggest issue for me was like, all of the hallways in the castle had the same walls. Yeah. Even the stable had the same walls as the hallways. Yeah. yeah. There was just so much repeated backgrounds. And I mean, the castle was comprised entirely of hallways and then a couple rooms and then like that coronation room that was really small. You mean the chapel? Yeah, basically. <laughs> it's like, I know there's huge limits on the budget and i would imagine this had a similar budget to four episodes of dream house adventures probably based on what i've seen of that show so they're working with what i would imagine is a slightly more limited budget than for most of the barbie movies that they've made but I don't know. I just wish they had been able to do something more interesting. Mm. Like if the visuals had been really good. Yeah. No, there wasn't really much that really popped out to me except for the one song with the black and white, the color. Yeah. That looked nice. Yeah. And, and the boat chase at the end, I think, was fun, though very brief. Yeah. I mean, there's goats. <laughs> yeah uh, overall um i gave the animation a four out of five that's more for the quality than the creativity yeah so mine is a 3.9 <laughs> oh <laughs> we finally broke the 3.8 phase just because they fixed their darn lighting <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's not the worst looking of these, but no. It's missing that like even Barbie Diaries had those creative camera angles. Mhm. And yeah, I, I I just I wish there was a tiny bit more there. But yeah, on to the voice acting. The um, voice acting, yeah. There, there's an interesting casting choice here. So America yes. Young plays Barbie in Dreamhouse Adventures. And so she's been brought back to play Barbie in this movie as well. And to play Amelia, they actually got Erica Lindbeck back. From I really like that, yes. Yeah. So you have the Barbie from the last movies and then the Barbie from the TV show that spun off from those movies coming yeah. together and having this like it was just so cool to to see their yeah sort of... well, what would have made it better is if barbie's mom was kelly that would have been cool yeah i, I mean that. it details semantics it doesn't yeah. matter but this is still really cool yeah to have them it's, it's a passing of the torch that i find kind of nice and it would have been nice if kelly had gotten that moment uh, I mean... <laughs> 
we don't need it that's just yeah. we're just begging but yeah still. i i almost hope and i doubt it's gonna happen but that um in the upcoming live action barbie movie that there are cameos from all of the different voice actors who have played barbie over the years i mean that would be really nice but i again i doubt that you, you could easily sneak them into like the background of a scene e- even but, get diana karina back um heck get kate higgins as well yeah no just anyone anyone who played barbie just like have them in a brief scene as like because we know there's gonna be a bunch of barbies so that would yeah, be yeah but it i, I somehow doubt i doubt going. because like they don't treat voice actors really well in hollywood yeah which is a shame uh but what are your thoughts on our new barbie voice actor um so you had the problem with erica lindbeck that i didn't have Mm -hmm. where you said she's giving a good performance but she doesn't sound like barbie and to me i was like oh she sounds like barbie okay america young does not sound like barbie to me (laughs) yeah i agree I, I, she sounds less like Barbie than Erica does. Yes, that that was what I was noticing every time they cut back to Princess Amelia. It's like, oh, she sounds more like Barbie than Barbie sounds like Barbie. I still don't feel like Erica sounds like Barbie, <laughs> but I think she's better. What's also weird is for America Young, she doesn't. She clearly doesn't sound like a Barbie, but it, it's it's also weird is that once every like. 30 lines she'll say a one word that sounds like barbie just one word okay and that's where she's very excited where like she says yes enthusiastically i'm like oh that kind of sounds like barbie but then the rest is like nothing like barbie (laughs) yeah so i could probably see where they got the casting but yeah no (laughs) i was like huh barbie I don't see it. <laughs> yeah. And she's not giving a bad performance by any no. means. No. It's like, it's the same I've been saying. Good performance. I just don't hear it. Yeah. And, and I'm finally on your side with this. I, I am not on your side with Erica Lindbeck not sounding like Barbie. Oh, that's but... fine. We still like her. Yeah. Yeah. We we like both of them. They both do good jobs. Yeah. Uh, she's mainly known for, I guess, doing Monster High yeah i've not seen any which makes sense why she would transfer over here yeah um yeah so alfonso is voiced by dave fenoy who is most notably does work in video games um you will hear him the most in the telltale games uh Uh, he's the lead for the walking dead one he he has played uh lucius Lucius Fox for the Batman games. So Okay. He's he's a popular guy for some games. So it was nice to hear him. It's like, ah, it's that guy. He has a really soothing voice. But he only has one voice apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I mean if he could do do that voice well then I mean who's stopping him? <laughs> yeah. No, none of the other performances stood out to me um, now all that much i i'm not the biggest fan of the voice actor for trey i don't think he quite sells that but i'm not gonna complain too much also none of our, uh, none of our guys are canadian right correct as far as i am aware i didn't go through each of their names but yeah Yeah, I don't know. I think part of it is honestly just that the script doesn't give any of the actors a big showcase. Right, yeah. Like, I I could see loving some of these performances if they had more time to build a character and have interesting line delivery. Mm -hmm. But instead, it's very, like basic so yeah i I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 
I also give it 3.5 out of 5. Yes. So yeah, last up we have music. This is a musical. Um, and the the musical numbers, I, I don't know if you will agree with me on this, but they range from fine to mediocre. At this point, it, for, for me, it was just background music to me. <laughs> I, I mean, essentially for me as well. I mean, I bopped to them. I was yeah. like, yeah, this is pretty neat. I don't think I'd ever listen to this, but it's like, sure, it fits the time period, I guess. Yeah. They, they're they a bit of a time waster at times, but yeah. Yeah. Music. I they're don't hate it. Very modern and a bit generic, which seems to be sort of the math club's MO, at least with these Barbie movies. Mm-hmm. Um, they, this isn't necessarily their A game. They, they're just kind of the songs are very functional but i don't know no, nothing stood out to me it's been a while since we've had like the actual songs like the score will stand out every once in a while but the songs they didn't even try to do the princess and the pauper uh to be a princess <laughs> yeah i i honestly in this one i would have appreciated not to be a princess but some other song from princess and the popper getting a call back or even just do those songs because they are good songs yeah it would have made the movie better a bit yeah just no. just commit to remaking princess and the popper yeah it's if been gonna do it at, at do that it. point it's been what 17 years since the original, but how many yeah. since the Popstar? I guess 16 years. Since Popstar, Popstar was 2012. Okay. So a good eight years as well. And these are also like kids media ages out faster than other forms of media. Like you think how most kids cartoons have a reboot every five years or so. Yeah. And, and that's just to like keep it fresh for new kids because your audience range is a lot smaller than for. And that's all. An also, it's like an animation syndication of like once you reach 52 episodes, there's really no need to continue because that's the amount needed to do reruns. So. Yeah. Yeah. I. I honestly would be interested in them doing remake princess and the popper with the animation that they are now able to do 2027 baby even even reuse the voice acting just do like a remaster like they'll do for video games maybe oh like the original film remastered or I guess reanimated, but like keep the dialogue, keep the songs, keep everything, but <laughs> redo the animation. I mean, some people have, some people have the fan videos of just uh, animating a couple songs from Princess and the Popper. It's on oh, YouTube. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty. Oh, I'll neat. have to look it up. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the the music here was just. It was fine. Like, like a lot of the stuff here, it's very average. So I gave it a 3 out of 5. I gave it a 3.3. 3, which is like... I want to give it a 3.5. Because I don't hate the music. But it's also like... It's there. <laughs> it's forgettable. It is. But I don't hate it when it's playing. I can yeah. enjoy it casually. Yeah, that that is definitely fair. Um, so yeah, my, my final score here is 16 out of 25, which is a 64% or a 3.2 on our five-star rating. Mine's a 16.7, which is a 66.8% or a 3.34 
five star rating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, it's a very average Barbie movie. Yeah. In a way that even other Barbie movies haven't felt quite this average. Yeah. No, we're probably reaching the end of the barrel here. Yeah, I'm hoping I'm hoping some of the later ones are more exciting. I mean, with the titles we have, probably not. <laughs> But well, hey, are... we've been surprised before with the titles. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, um, next week does not look all that hopeful. But thank you everyone for listening, and make sure to follow us on social media. We are binging Barbie podcast on Instagram at binging Barbie on Twitter and binging Barbie a Barbie movie podcast on Letterbox. Um, and yeah, as I was alluding to, next week we will be talking about Barbie. And Chelsea, the lost birthday. Oh, ho, 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 yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> uh, the, I've seen the trailer for this and the animation style on the animals is an interesting choice. And I will leave it at that. It's going to be a fun time. Yeah. T- tune in next week to see. It should be a fun episode, no matter what we think. Either we love it, or we're just dead inside. Either way, you'll enjoy it, even if we don't. Hopefully. See, See you all next week.